Hello. Here's my homily for the sixth Sunday of Easter, which is the 9th of May, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of my favourite gospel passages is John chapter 15, and we have another section of it today uh, for our gospel, verses 9 to 17, where Jesus tells us not only that God loves us, not only that we are chosen, but that we are chosen to be drawn into a special relationship with him, in which we are not just his followers, but his friends. Given this amazing officer, offer, I think we need to think a bit more about what true friendship is. Can we begin with Shakespeare, because he makes a useful distinction between faithful friend and flattering foe. At least it might be Shakespeare, though some say it's not. Anyway, the author suggests that whilst we have money and good fortune, many a one may claim to be our friend. But once these are not present, once we face troubles of one kind or another, then only a real friend will stand by us. We might notice immediately that a friend cannot protect us from any troubles we may face. But what he or she can do is support us, stand by us, and by so doing, help us to face such things and help us to know that we're never alone. The fact that a faithful friend is never a flatterer takes us even further because a good friend is the sort of person from whom you really can get fair criticism and hard advice, can't you? And why? Because the relationship is close enough, trusting enough, for him or her to know and to trust that you will listen rather than taking offence. And because a good friend knows you well, he or she probably knows some of what you're thinking before you say anything. And if you do say anything, he, will be a, he or she will be able to understand the deeper meaning behind your outward words. And all these things, I think, take, teach us more about prayer. As a friend, God cannot always prevent troubles coming upon us. God is not a magician, and if we try to treat him like one, we're sadly out of tune with him. What we do know is that whatever we face, however hard things may be, God never deserts us. God is always there to listen and to give us support simply by being there with us as our friend. But God knows us better than we know ourselves. And provided we do not hide from him in prayer by talking at him too much, God will often provide us with hard but good advice. We will say, as Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, Father, but yours be done. And that will not be some hard advice imposed on us from on high, as some think of God's will, but advice that we know is right, even though we may be reluctant to do it, or need help to overcome our fear. Many people worry that they don't say the right things to God in prayer, that their mind wanders onto all sorts of ordinary everyday things instead of concentrating on what is really important. But this too is to misunderstand what God is like. Here is a time when we must try even harder to think of God as a friend, because a friend wants us to share every part of our life with him or her, wants to hear the latest news about our family, our work, our hobbies, or anything, good or bad, that's on our mind. There are no special important things that we ought to share with God and other things that we ought not to bother God with. That would be to treat God as a doctor or a lawyer who we only contact when we're really in trouble. We need to remember what we hear in our second reading today, 1 John chapter 4. God is love. And if we link that to what St Paul teaches about love in that famous passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and just put in the word God to replace the word love, then you'll see what I mean. God is patient and kind. God does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices with the truth. God bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Have you ever thought that this is one of the purposes of the sacrament we normally call confession? 
Too often, people see confession as a way of putting things right with God. Well, it is this, of course, but it's a lot more than this if we think of God as our friend. Yes, we might upset our friend by something we've said or done, but when we say sorry to our friend, it's very different from saying sorry to someone we do not know or saying sorry to some high-up power who might otherwise punish us. Our friend really cares about us, and so when we express our sorrow, all we meet is love and understanding. And this is what any good confessor should convey to us. Indeed, I know of one eminent theologian, now deceased, who went to make his confession in Rome. The confessor didn't know who he was, and subjected him to a long lecture on how wicked he was. He meekly left the confessional, said his penance, and then waited for the priest to emerge. Then he grabbed him and gave him a good ticking off and a stern lecture on what the confessional is really for. At its best, making one's confession brings home to each of us in a very real way how much God cares about us and understands us, even when we confess the same old failures every time we go. I got irritated with so-and-so again. I was greedy when the cakes were offered to me again, and so on. In one sense, these are trivial failures, but we share them in the confessional because we're thus assured that God, as our friend, cares about every aspect of our lives and will always listen to us. Yes, we may know the theory, the teaching from Jesus, that God loves us, that he is our friend, but making our confession can often bring this home to us in a very hands-on way. One could say the same about the sacrament of the sick. I remember when I was very ill many years ago and the priest came to anoint me. As a priest myself, I'd always been a bit worried that I was bothering the sick person with the length of the proceedings the Bible reading, the various prayers, the laying on of hands in silence, the anointing and the prayers that follow. But when I heard them, all of them, applied to me, lying there in pain, I just felt overwhelmed by God's love. Of course, confession often forms part of this ceremony, but sometimes if the person is unconscious and dying, then the priest simply tells them that he assumes their penitence and not only gives them the normal absolution, but what is called the plenary indulgence, a prayer that affirms even more strongly how much God loves them. All of this reminds us that God is with us as our friend at the end of all things, so that when we die, we will not meet some faraway force or power, even though God is this too, but we will meet our friend and be with him forever. So may God Almighty bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.